Hello, everyone. All right, so I'm Sean Tracy. I'm the Senior Director of Tools and Tech Content here at Cloud Imperium Games in Los Angeles. So today, I want to talk about StarCloth. And StarCloth was initially unveiled at a previous CitizenCon, kind of in an early stage. So it's now rolled into full production, and it's uh, used in both Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. So it's going to be seen on more and more assets, like some of the great art that you just saw. So what's really cool about it is that it's unified with the physical world, whereas before, it wasn't unified and was based completely on character movement. Now, it's faster than the previous cloth setups, and in the end, it just looks a whole lot better. So today, I'm going to cover some of the tech, the pipeline, and we'll see some results. So let's get and see it in action. Cloth is hard. Guys have to run upstairs. They have to crouch. They have to prone. It's got to collide with the environment. And even more difficult, it needs to hold up in high-end cinematics. Cut that one just before some good spoilers, so, yeah. All right, so how does it all work? Well, Cloth uses two meshes, a simulation mesh or cage and the render mesh itself. So vertex colors indicate how it's constrained to that cage and thus the simulation. So for example, black vertex colors indicate a full constraint. Basically, it follows the skinning. White vertex colors indicate unconstrained vertices. So the movement is determined entirely by the simulation. And then we can do a blend of gray values that is used for fine transitions and blending of fall off in between the fully skinned and fully simulated assets. So in the end, these meshes are sent to the engine where we bind the cage to the render mesh and then tech artists can leverage some of the runtime tools. You can see up on the image that the sim cage mesh has about 5,000 triangles, whereas the actual render mesh is about 45,000 triangles. So it's obviously much more efficient to simulate the sim cage mesh versus just the render mesh itself. So part of the technology is the runtime iteration support, which you can see in the image above me here. Uh, that's with all the red spheres. Here we're actually painting the collision radius of every single one of the vertices and allows us to fine tune the simulation without having to add arbitrary collision meshes, though we can. We paint a variety of properties. So some of these other properties are mass or displacement. In the top right, you can see an example of the old legacy implementation using pendulums. And this uses joint chains and collisions, but assets with multiple layers, like the one that you can see there, or ones like skirts or gowns, they were really, really difficult to do with pendulum simulation, but they are solved with star cloth. So I mentioned it's completely unified with the physical world. And what that really means is that wind, impacts, object collisions, thruster backwash, all these kind of things actually react to the, or the cloth reacts to these things, and so much more. So it's not just character movement. Now, it's a hyper-efficient simulation, and it's several orders of magnitude faster than the legacy implementation that we used before, and has a lot of easy-to-control parameters for tech art, which are compression, stretching, and bending. So as mentioned yesterday by Chris Rain, our senior lead physics programmer, we support soft body tapered capsules, which are twice as fast as our ragdoll capsules. It's also key to solving one of the most important aspects of plausible cloth simulation, and that's mitigating the tunneling or the clipping that happens uh, uh, through a character. So it's very, very difficult to solve with pendulums. So with all this tech in mind, we can do really complicated assets like the duster and the one I want to show you now. So here you're seeing about five different layers of cloth going on and self-colliding between each other. It's reacting to the planet wind, which is always changing. 
On the front, there's a big leather apron. So this one's actually a lot heavier and it moves a lot differently than the cloth on the back. So he's walking into the wind here. And in the end, as I mentioned, it just looks a whole lot better. <laughs>